What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the Firewall Podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Hines. What's up? What's up? What's going on? And Chris Abacon. What's going on, everybody? What's going on, Chris? So Chris came back. You, you were here last week, though. So you came back from vacation. I was here last week. There you go. That's right. A couple of newsletters. So i uh, got to put it up front. So please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. There's a bell involved. Hit it. Uh, and then subscribe to our newsletter. So every week we put in uh, all the episodes, embed all the videos, and one-stop shop. And in it, we have some of Chris's uh, photos. So definitely check it out. And then uh, came up with a thumbnail. It wasn't me. It was AI. But we'll talk about that on Friday's episode. So definitely continue to tune in for that. Without further ado, I'll give it to Shannon. All right, everybody. This article comes from theregister.com, written by Connor Jones. The title of it is Three Cups for Helping North Koreans Secure Remote IT Jobs in America. What ended up happening was there were three individuals that got accused of helping North Korea. Uh, uh, what they're saying they're doing is funding the weapons program, and they're using U.S. money to do it, right? And the way they're doing it is they'll have somebody that'll come on uh, and try to get one of these remote jobs, but the actual work is being handed off and given to somebody else uh, in North Korea. So what's happening is the person that's pretending to be the face, uh, for, for these, uh, for these applicants is just getting a cut of it. And the rest is getting sent off to, to North Korea to fund whatever it may be, right? Let's say operations, nuclear operations, maybe get some food from somebody, you know what I mean? North Korea struggling over there, but they got three people they caught with this. They had this one guy, Ming Fuang Bong of Bowie, Maryland. I, I hate I hate for my state of Maryland to get put on the map this way, but this is how it happened. <laughs> but uh, they got char- he actually got charged uh, with conspiracy to commit wire fraud, uh, secured jobs under his own identity, which were allegedly carried out by remote North Korean workers. From- but he wasn't the only one. They also arrested arrested U.S. national Christina Marie Chapman of Litchfield Park, Arizona. And she was running like a laptop farm. So what she was doing was providing, uh, I don't want to say the environment, but she was providing the IP addresses for people to remote to remote work that were from out of the country, that were from North, North Korea. And they, dis- they discovered this as well. So um, people are getting smart about doing these types of things, man. Like it, this is something that it, it shouldn't really surprise us because with the onset of COVID, um, remote working was one of those things that was very much desirable. You know what I mean? Like everybody wants a remote job. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know if it works so much for me. I spend too much time playing with my kids. You know what I mean? I, I might not be as focused as I need to be. You know what I mean? But uh, they're, they're very desirable to do the remote work because like, you can do it from anywhere. You don't necessarily have to be in your home. You don't have to be, um, you know, confined to a state, wherever it may be headquartered or whatever, people can travel and just do what they want to do. So um, the fact that this happened wasn't surprising to me. Um, the fact that the, like the scale of it, like some of the stuff they mentioned in the article and how many people uh, that were that were doing it, I was kind of like, wow, like that's that's a fair amount that's actually getting this done like this. But um, yeah, they got they got three people that got uh, that got caught up in this and uh, and were uh, were arrested for it. But the, the thing that that kind of kind of trips me out is they they talk about the websites that they were set up for this and they talk about how they were clumsily set up right and so according to the prosecutors for this um there was awkward phrasing poor grammar so it's kind of like the old phishing emails you know what i mean like it doesn't have the proper english in it it's it, you know probably doesn't have a real name on it or anything like that like it should have thrown should have thrown flags but in this day and age what's What's kind of trippy about this is that AI is, will clean all of that up. Like, why was AI not something thought about to try to make this some more? And I'm not trying to make criminals smarter. I don't want to do that. I don't want to say that's what we that's what we're doing out here. I'm not trying to be lumped in when the DOJ starts coming for people and they're like, yep, other side of the firewall, we got you. You out here giving pointers on how people could be better criminals. That's not what I'm saying. It's just that in this day and age, and we've talked about it on here, um, where you see AI is just making things so much easier for criminals to get by. But uh, they talk about they talk about it in the article how it should have been one of those things that they caught on to immediately because the the websites were so uh, uh, clumsily developed is what they called them. So, uh, but yeah, this is gonna be the this is gonna be something that we're we're going to see more of this because I don't think the remote job thing is going away. Um, there are some companies that were like, yeah, we'll be able to do this forever and started bringing people back, but you still have there will still be a segment that's gonna have the remote jobs out there. So. It, it's this is not going to go away. This is not going to be the first time we're going to see people cuffed, as they put it in the article, um, for helping out a foreign government. But Chris, what's your thoughts on this? I mean, first thoughts for me was, you know, one, how specifically, so of course, Christine Chapman tried to run a server farm, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry a laptop, right? So with uh, from North Korea remoting in 
uh, virtual desktop, whatever, to these specific assets. So the first thing that came to mind was, what do these companies' asset matter? Right? Do they have and do they have their own um, net centrally managed laptops, or are they getting these remote shops from this? You know, bring your own device. It's some, some rules like that, right? So it really depends on one the job. But that was the first thing that came to mind. And then really the second uh, was what type of secure connections were they using? Uh, at least from the from, from for using remote shops. If they're able to um, remote into these specific IP assets or these specific laptops, that means to me that maybe they weren't on some type of VPN. They're not using some type of zero trust solution that requires connectivity to this specific policy or enforcement point. Right. So to me, I think, it, it, it's just uh, there's a lot of questions, right? For me, uh, one specifically, I'm going to be asset management. And then there's the whole physical security aspect of it, like, hey, who tracks this stuff, right? And then the, the another thing that came to mind was background checks, right? Who checks the job, like these people's you know, backgrounds? Are these even real, you know, people that are applying to these jobs or or something to that effect? So. I think, like uh, Shannon was saying, a lot of this stuff could have been prevented, but preemptively, if there were secure processes in place to prevent, you know, employees or, you know, hey, everybody's at the same address. I, I'm not sure about this Christina Chapman person, but clearly there was something fishy about her operations. So yeah, that, that's the first thing that came to mind. How could this have been prevented? And like Shannon said, these people like, I was reading that these about death persistent threats are getting really sneaky. They're figuring out ways to infiltrate, not just, you know, it's, they're creating insider threats, which is crazy. They're going right to the source. And that show, that goes to show you how bold these people are and how really brazen their methodology is. Cause really, I haven't thought about that. Like, like we know in the cybersecurity world, about you know, Trojan horses, you know, Social engineering, things like that. But this is social engineering to another level when you've got an insider in, in the environment. So that's, that's really my, my thoughts. I think it's, yeah, it is wild. That's all I'm going to say. It's, it's wild. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't find a mute button. So before, <laughs> I, before I go on, so please like, share, subscribe. Uh, sorry, I got to keep pandering. Uh, we're almost at 400. I think we're at like 398, 399. So the goal is 500 subscribers by the end of June. So we can try to push for a thousand by the end of the year. And then once we hit a thousand, we'll have the ability to do more with the, uh, the channel, more eyes on it. Uh, and then you get more capabilities and they started paying me for their ads. I'm starting to see ads pop up on our videos and I get none of that. So, uh, I, I want a piece of it, but, uh, hit up all the websites to go by our name. See if we have the other side of the firewall, the other side of the FW or ask a CISSP. Um, but yeah, with Christina Chapman, I had to, I, I know a person named Christina Chapman, so I just had to uh, Google her, her photo real quick to make sure it wasn't the same person. <laughs> It'd be diabolical. Um, diabolical, no, so great. My, my, uh, so I don't, I, I, obviously I take umbrage with them, uh, you know, capturing these jobs and then having uh, people, foreign entities, uh, work them to, to capture the money. But like Shannon said, it's, it's super clever. Uh, and I'm sure if it's being done by our adversaries, it's got to be a hustle here in the States. So this is probably being done way more than we, we uh, expect. Because uh, I, I know people who are, uh, quote unquote, overemployed, right? Meaning that they have multiple jobs that are full-time jobs because they're able to multitask and what have you, or they're not task saturated. But I would not be surprised if people were setting this up on LinkedIn to provide services where, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, be your face and you'll be the person who's actually pulling the strings or vice versa. Because it, it just makes monetary sense that this would be a thing. Uh, I just didn't expect to see it coming from uh, North Korea. Definitely clever, like, uh, but I would not be like once they figure out how to solve this solution, if they can then take this to the states and figure out how many people are uh, doing this, because it might it might not be against the law, right? Like if it's not in your uh, statement of work or in your employee handbook that you can't be overemployed or that you you know what I mean? Like the the thing would be the fraud. That would be the problem. Uh, you you know uh, acting as though you're somebody else. The thing I don't quite understand though is if they're interviewing these people because right now to get a good job you got to go through several rounds of interviews so were the north koreans prepping them to go into the uh interview or the interviewer is not on camera like which one is it right because now camera that makes sense uh you can these people can speak for themselves uh hopefully they have put on their you know uh, american accents or what, or what have you or not like because every company is supposed to hire equitably 
equitably equitably the the access shouldn't uh hamper you unless like your customer service or something like that where you have to be able to uh service specific type people who may not be good with accents like you know uh, some some americans uh, when they talk to, to customer service but if they're if they were not a, a front facing position like if they were just in the back work of engineering or something like that then they don't need to speak they just need to work like hey, they're, they're too easy so, so the thing is so like in the article they, they, they kind of talk about this a little bit is that um the front facing person like the, there was a ceo that did do an interview with them right so they should passport driver's license but they're not the ones actually performing the work so even though they're paying this person that was front facing like some of that money is going off elsewhere right like it's, it, it's just like with any of us right like we can have our money for direct deposit go wherever we wherever we need it to uh-huh. so how right. maybe it's going to north korea or russia or china or wherever it may be right but no like uh, like one one of these people was a nail salon tech. So Chris, this goes to what you're talking about. If they did better background checks, they could have figured this out before we got to this point. Like you're a nail salon tech. Like ex- explain how this all came hey, about. Like I didn't see this hey, on your resume. Yeah. You know, that's a good point. So I'm, I'm over here fighting the the, uh, the war against feedback. So that's why I keep cutting my mic on and off. Um, no, it's 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 a very interesting uh, topic because yeah, I didn't I did, I wouldn't have thought how to capitalize as a foreign entity to make this happen. But yeah, here in the states, I'm, I'm sure this is happening to, to some regard. But yeah, like Chris said, like if, if they're being issued uh, a company laptop, then where what's going on with your XDR solution? Like, how are you not capturing this this weird traffic uh, going through? Because uh, as we know, VPNs can only do so much cleanup. Uh, and if you're supposed to be connecting to the company's secure VPN, then you can't. Like, is a VPN to a VPN? And how are they cleaning up their uh, their IPs? But yeah. if it's not, if it's just a BYO, bring your own device. Yeah, BYOD uh, type situation. That, I mean sky's the limit like if all you have to do is uh log in and use office 365 to send out emails then, like, there's no there's no way to capture this uh except for when it starts to get uh weird this person's just not acting right or like if you try to capture them in a, a meeting uh and you, you obviously see them working on nails in the background <laughs> you see spike's feet <laughs> in in the water getting getting uh done up but yeah that crazy crazy topic it just popped up so i was like you know what we should throw this on monday get get the week started right before we start talking about all the, the breach nonsense that, that follows throughout the week. So definitely continue to tune in uh, throughout the week. So Monday, Tuesday are topics, Wednesday discussion, Thursdays, uh, ask assist P this week will probably be something a little bit different. Like last week, I am recording one on Monday with uh, Delisha Hodo from Sands Institute. However, uh, I want to take my time to clean up uh, the recording. I don't want to be rushed, right? And she has to review it rushed. So we'll probably delay that one by a week just to have one in the, uh, uh, one in the pocket. And then uh, Friday's everything else. So movies, books, games, all that good stuff. So we definitely have some stuff to talk about. It won't be uh, Chris bragging about his Costa Rican trip. So I won't have to, to <laughs> worry about anchoring the, the episode, bringing everybody down, right, after hearing about him. But yeah, uh, tune in, check everything out. And then if you have not, please go back and check out our archives. We have almost 600 episodes. I think we're at 590-something with this episode. So plenty of content for you to check out. Again, we're on all of the social medias by the other side of the firewall, the other side of the FW, or ask a CISSP. You can find me personally. I am at RyRy Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. You can find me on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, IG, Twitter, TikTok, and... Oh, say threads? Threads, there it is. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm never... Threads. Right. Yeah. And, and you, Chris, where can I find you? You can find me on LinkedIn under Chris Avocon. There it is. Stay safe. Stay secure. Thank you.